Welcome to the 2018 North Face Seago Block Bouldering Competition. My name is Nellie Melfeld. I'm going to be your host throughout this evening. We're going to hear from athletes, industry leaders, and talk to a lot of these incredible athletes who worked so hard to get to this point. I'm standing here with Mike Call, who's one of the co-founders of this event. Mike, tell us a little bit more about the history of how this got started. Sure. So this event started with Chris Sharma in Spain, and he went to uh, an event in Bilbao and did an event very similar to this. And he'd been climbing in Mallorca, and he loves deep water soloing. And uh, we came to the States, and we, saw, we thought between he and I and a couple of friends, we decided to make a competition here. We have a perfect venue, and um, yeah, we just decided to put it on here, and it's been going for six years straight now. So, What's the format of the competition? So the format is pretty simple. Uh, you have two climbers side by side climbing on the identical routes, and they are um, competing to the top of the wall. Now, if you get to the top of the route first, you win. If neither one of you finish the route, the person at the highest point wins. It's pretty basic. What's cool about this event is there's such a big purse. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, that. it's the biggest purse in the United States. Um, I, we're really proud of that. We want to make this um, you know, a, an event that's a, a marquee event. So we feel like these people are risking life and limb and, and putting all their skills to test, and we want to we want to reward them for it. And the walls are 55 feet tall, right? Yeah, 55 foot tall walls, and, and that's about the height of the walls in Mallorca, which is not an accident. It's basically the height in which you can still feel pretty safe, but it's risky. People get hurt all the time, so it's it's just high enough, and and um, it puts the puts the fear in you as you get up there. Yeah, we were watching qualifiers today, and so many of the top level athletes were actually getting kind of hurt, which yep. I was surprised to see. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't come in perfectly, if you don't come in perfectly straight, you watch these guys when they come in on landing, and if they don't come in perfectly straight, it hurts, especially from 55 feet up. So over the past six years, how's the level of competition? How's it changed? Well, it's you know people are actually getting better at this. Um, you'll see some people here tonight that have been here every year. Oh, we're going to go to the top of the wall, it looks like, or to the start of the wall. So right now we're going to take you to the wall. We have Emily Harrington, who is on the left. Emily Harrington is a really well-known person in climbing. She is at Everest. Um, she did Everest a few years ago. She's climbed many 514s. And she's no stranger to the competition circuit. She won many nationals back in the day. She's going head-to-head -head with Melise Edwards, who is a Washington Boulder uh, neurobiology researcher who likes to compete as well. And what I think is really cool about this event is you see people who are professional climbers and also people who are professionals who take the sport seriously and train really hard like Melise and are coming here and will put on a good show. Yeah, Emily's been at this event many years. She, uh, she's, she's great. She's um, willing to jump in and do almost any kind of discipline. She came from a sport climbing background, which means rope, rope protection and indoor climbing competitions. And she's branched out to be one of the world-class mountaineers of our time. So in talking with a lot of the women earlier, they said the route is about 12 plus, and right where Melise is, is where it starts to kick back a little bit, and you're about to enter into the first crux. This is when you start to feel the exposure. It's just, it just there's nothing about it in climbing that trains you for this. No climber trains to feel comfortable without a rope or any protection 20 feet off the ground, let alone 55. So you're starting to feel it here. It doesn't look like they're really even thinking about it right now. I know, which is crazy because these holds are really bad. When I was underneath the wall and looking at them and touching sort of the first holds, they're slopers. They're not jugs. You really don't get a good hold until that Waco feature and you're going into an undercling. As it gets deeper, you feel that exposure on your back even more. You, you're feeling the pull of that pool. And you know that if you don't go in straight, it's going to hurt. So it's hard to commit to putting your foot up high. It's hard to commit to a heel hook. It just makes you think about the impact. So Melise is doing really well. She's doing a lot better than I saw her in qualifiers today. She told me earlier that she's really scared of heights. She doesn't look like it. There's definitely a factor of the crowd pushing them along too. In, in qualifiers, there's not that many people watching. We've got a couple thousand people here watching, and they're, they're going to do their best. Emily had a bit of a rough go yesterday. She came in a little bit backwards, and uh, she had a little bit of a um, bad impact. Oh, Melise talked. 
That's awesome. What an amazing comeback from qualifiers. She's so amazing. psyched. It's so great. So much a part of our sport, so much a part of the fabric of our sport to just cheer people on. It's not really a competition, it's more of an exhibition, really. A lot of these women are really good friends. Oh! We'll see if she comes That's up a really okay. Good join for Emily. She bruised her tailbone really badly yesterday, and she wasn't sure whether she's going to compete, but she said, you know what, I come here to put on a good show. I'm going to still try to do it. Yeah, she's as tough as they come. What a great moment from Elise. I can tell you from being at the top of this wall, it's absolutely horrifying. <laughs> it's a double-edged sword. You get to top out, but then you have to jump. It's bittersweet. So we're at a ski jumping practice facility, so they aerate the pool to make the impact softer. So you'll see bubbles coming up once in a while. So now we have Sammy Singleton, who's from Salt Lake City. She is the 2017 Youth Sports Climbing Champion. She told me she never thought she would do it because she was scared. Well. We also have Katie Myers, who on a whim entered this event. It's pretty fascinating. So she started climbing when she was 28. She's 35 years old. And on Thursday night, she thought, I'm just going to drive to Salt Lake City and enter this event. Wow, that's amazing. First comp for Katie, too. There are so many women in this field that have never done this before, and it's really interesting to watch them adapt. It's pretty amazing watching all these women do so well at this comp. Women who have never competed before, never deep water soloed before. She looks focused. She's keeping her eye on it. She's not really thinking about the fall. Sometimes the strategy is to wait and see what your competitor can do. If they, if they fall off, then you only have to get a hold higher than them for, to move on. So she's definitely watching her competitor, seeing where she sits, resting, taking her time. They're also keeping in mind that they have to do this to succeed. They have to do it several times in a row. So they're getting the route even more wired as they go. Earlier today, they had two. Oh. Looks like that strategy paid off for Sammy. They had two seed rounds earlier today. Oh. Ah, little offline there. So that's when you're talking about the strategy as far as she already knew that Katie fell. She doesn't want to waste a lot of energy. Right. Yep, there's no reason to go to the top and get more pumped than you're going to be if you go all the way. So it's also a smaller fall. You know, it's kind of nice to just drop off halfway yeah. once in a while. So something you might notice that's a little bit different. There are four women who have a pass into round two because there are 12 competitors this year. So Hannah Tolson, Nina Williams, Delaney Miller, and Zoe Steinberg have a pass to round two. And then this first round are going to go head-to-head -head with those other women. Lonnie's a local Salt Lake climber. Mother, developer. She and her husband have four kids. Really strong boulder, has done a lot of first ascents in Salt Lake City. We also have Michelle Abshire on the left. Michelle is a Phoenix resident. She's 22. She competed a lot as a younger climber. 
She's actually on a six-month road trip right now, and this is her last stop in her road trip. It's a good way to end it. <laughs> no kidding. In front of millions of people online and thousands of people live. Lonnie's climbing well. She looks relaxed. I see her on the gyms in Salt Lake quite a bit, and it's cool that she's uh, jumped into this mess. Yeah, both these women look a lot more relaxed than they did in qualifiers. I can't imagine the nerves that you feel the first time you're doing this type of competition. One of the big risks with the jump moves is that you could swing out and go horizontal and come in on your stomach. So nobody... It, you know, when you feel that kind of exposure, it's really hard to commit to a move like that. And you'll see that all night long tonight. They're both looking a little pumped. They both are shaking out quite a bit. The word I hear from the climbers is that both these roots are very pumpy, which means that the fitness is a factor. It's not so much just power. It's, it's a very stamina oriented route. Yeah, what I've heard from the woman is that there really isn't any rest when you go up the entire wall. There's no, really no great opportunity to shake out, and some were debating whether or not it's worth it. So some climbers may continue even though their competitor fell in, and it's just to get the route more wired. It's, it's, a, it's a strategy to get uh, a stronger go in the next round. Make sure she's okay. That was a really good go for Michelle. She definitely did better than in qualifiers. She looked a lot more comfortable on the route. She looks like she got the wind knocked out of her a little bit. We do have lifeguards and paramedics on poolside just in case anything goes wrong. So they're ready to jump in if anything goes terrible. This is another local Salt Lake climber. Coach, oh, vegan, no. part of Momentum Climbing Gym. Lizzie Ellison is going against Maddie Morris. Maddie goes to the University of Houston and is actually the 2018 collegiate bouldering champion. Wow. You'll see a few women tonight who compete on the collegiate level. Hannah Tolson is also a competitor for Gonzaga. I talked to Lizzie last night and she said that she was absolutely terrified of this wall, but um, she's a boulder and she's got, she's got an amazing ability to just, uh, you know, get it done when she needs to get it done. And she, she was excited to see what happens when she get the roots, gets the root a little more wired. She looks really comfortable right now. I know that she was a little hesitant in qualifiers. She looks pretty far behind, but I've seen people come back from this far back. And then it's sort of a game of whether or not, how far is your person that you're racing against, how far will that person get? Yep. If yep. you can climb slower, but get higher. Yep. Looks like Maddie's slowing down just to see what happens with Lizzie. I talked to Jimmy Webb earlier, and he said one of the things about his route was all the root holds are about the same size, so the pump factor comes in. You start to get really fatigued because your hand's doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. That's right. The grip is almost exactly the same on all these holds. Oh, Maddie's, Maddie's looking so tired. Well. Come on. I think she's going to top out. It'll be interesting to see how this stacks up as you do 
the next round and the next round, how much that pump starts to factor in. Oh, there goes Lizzie. Great first attempt. Looks like Maddie's going for it. That's what we like to see. I mean, this is really a show. It's one of the things Chris always talked about when, uh, when he thought about this. Make it a show. This is awesome. What a good performance by Maddie. One thing I've We're noticed gonna... over the years is that you've got veterans and... You got veterans and, and kids coming out of the gym situation and, and they have equal chance to do well in this event. It's so cool to watch people that have been competing for a super long time and then young women that are coming out of the youth climbing circuit. A lot of these younger women were saying that they just love being here because so many of their idols are climbing against them. And it's really inspiring to see these people that have been climbing for so long and doing really well. Great angle of the height. Hi, I'm here with Emily Harrington, who we just saw in round one. You had a little bit of an accident yesterday. What happened? I think I might have bruised my tailbone yesterday, but I'm fine. I still climb today. I'm in a little bit of pain. I might not be able to sit down for the next few weeks, but it's, it's gonna, I'm going to be okay. How did that happen? I think I just, you know, stuff like this is, it's hard when you're falling from really high up and you fall a little bit out of control. I landed like maybe a little seated and I think oh, that's no. what did it. Yeah, that's not good. No. Carla Traversi said he did the exact same thing twice. Yeah, there's about four, four people that I think have done it today or yesterday. Oh, wow. Yeah. What, um, is that the first time you've been injured in this event? It is. I think I've been lucky. Now that I've been injured once, I think I've gotten lucky the last five years. Yeah, then you won't get injured again, right? Hopefully not. So how is this year different from the previous years that you've competed? How is it different? Um, well, I feel like it's a little bit more... The roots is quite a bit harder for me this year. I don't know if it's just because I have less endurance or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it seems like the crowd is maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, I don't know. I mean, every year, this is literally my favorite climbing competition that I ever do and have ever done. So it's just my favorite event of the year. How many times have you done it now? This will be my uh, sixth. Oh, no, wow. Fifth. Sixth. I can't remember. Well, it's been on for six years, so. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't do it last year. So okay. it's my fifth year. So tell us a little bit about why you like this comp better than the other comps you've done. Because you've done sport climbing comps for such a long time, and you were part of Youth Nationals. Yeah, so I've kind of phased out of doing climbing competitions with the exception of this event. And the main reason, I think, is there's a lot of camaraderie between the competitors and between the audience, and it's more of a show. And we're really here to have a good time and to make sure that everyone else who's watching has a good time. And for me, that's that was my favorite part about climbing competitions, and now this is this just encompasses all of it. Yeah. No, I mean, it's such an incredible event, and it was really cool to watch all of the women backstage doing, just supporting each other and rooting each other on. So now we are seeing a match off between Sammy and Nina. Nina Williams had a little bit of an accident in the CD rounds earlier today. You can see that her knee is taped up because she hit her knee really, really hard and has a pretty big bruise on it. Emily's got to head out, but thanks, Emily, for joining me for only a few minutes. <laughs> thanks, Nellie. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. We'll catch you later. Okay. So Nina was topping out earlier today, twice. She looked really, really strong, but I wonder how much her knee is affecting her at this point.
Wow, Sammy is doing so well. Oh, wow. What an awesome performance. I would say that's a little bit of an upset. Nina was one of the four women that topped out in the qualifiers. Sammy wasn't looking as strong, but it goes to show that this is just a performance and how much doing those rounds can help you get to the top. We're going to see them jump off together. So joining me is Alex Puccio. Hello. No stranger to hard climbing competitions and fashion as well. Boys looking I'm, great. <laughs> I'm trying tonight, so yeah. So where are you coming from right now? Uh, Salt Lake City. Okay. So I live in Salt Lake City now. Have you been traveling a lot? What have you been up to? I Well, the reason I'm not competing tonight is because I had knee surgery two and a half weeks ago to clear out some of the meniscus tear that I had. So oh um, yeah, that's why I got the okay from the doctor to start climbing about two or three days ago. And it's a little sore and tender, and now I'm training for the World Championships. That's coming up uh, yeah. in September, so I'm trying to be smart about it. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I would say the seagull block is probably not what your doctor <laughs> wants you to do. Yeah, I mean, you think about, like, falling in water should be safe, right? But then Nina just hurt her knee yeah. yesterday, so, um, I mean, it's not always safe. And, I mean, every time I've done this competition, I have bruises all up and down my arms, like my butt, my legs, everything. So, yeah, it's <laughs> definitely, I mean, landing in water is, it kind of hurts. <laughs> yeah, I can't even imagine. Every time people jump off, I sort of hold my breath a little bit. <laughs> I mean, Sammy just did it there pretty amazingly, to be honest. I could never get the whole penciling thing right. I would just, like, <laughs> I'd pencil, and then right before I hit the water, I would, like, flare out and then just, like, get so much water in places it shouldn't be. It kind of sucks. <laughs> so right now we have Delaney Miller on the left. She has done really well at this event, gotten second place twice. And she's been working on climbing faster. I did the, uh, I was with Team Texas, which... I was uh, with Team Texas when they were here for their um, team training camp a few weeks ago, and she was definitely working on speed climbing and, and climbing faster. So let's see it pay off tonight. Yeah, I really know. I remember watching this when it a few years ago, and I was impressed how much faster she's gotten. I mean, it's she's really worked hard at it. And I think her traveling the world, I know that she's been doing a lot of sort of bigger multi-pitch sport climbs, I think is paying off or something like this. Yeah, and I think coming into your own and like you said, just getting older and like being more familiar with your body. And I mean, I'm not quite sure if she's trying to make a push for the Olympics, but if she is, I mean, we have to speed climb. So, yeah. and that's a huge factor. So I, and I've seen her start to train speed climbing. So I guess that she might be, but I'm not 100%. You also see Michelle Abshire on the right, who's doing such a great job. She's really bringing it in these final rounds here. Now, this is actually my first, like, real glance at this route since I wasn't here yesterday. And I'd say the hold selection is, like, really cool this year. Um, kind of makes me, like, sad that I'm not competing on it. But uh, Only you would find <laughs> the worst slopey hold school. <laughs> this is, like, literally my worst nightmare. You want all, like, the little crimps or something. That's right. But <laughs> I just want a crimp ladder that goes up the wall, but really only goes about 20 feet up the wall. <laughs> I mean, I would like 20 feet as well. I mean, I'm a boulder. <laughs> Let's not forget that. No surprise here that Delaney topped out. She topped out all of the earlier rounds today. Looked really confident, smooth, fast. And she's really brave, too. So I think she might actually go for the jump off the top. I actually only jumped off the top once my very first year. And every other time, I, like, climb down those, like, down climbing rungs. So I, uh, I'm i a little bit of a wuss when it comes to this, <laughs> to be honest. I think they're not letting people do that this year. Wait, they're not? No, those, like, green things, like, in the center? Oh, yeah. No, but Oh, she is. Be, okay. I remember that you used to be able to go off the back, right? Um... Yeah, uh, I never really, you're not allowed to ever go off the back, but um, I did a couple times. Not ashamed of it. <laughs> but yeah, what Delaney's doing right now and let it climbing down and then like, you climb down about 10 feet. So it doesn't really make that much of a difference to so, be honest. So I think it's a mental feet. difference to be, <laughs> so yeah. 
but she's advancing to the next round, which is like really cool to see. And um, I've actually never fallen off the roof myself. Oh, you haven't? No, so I don't know what that actually feels like. I mean, maybe it's scary, but like less scary because you don't have time to think about it. Oh yeah, she penciled pretty well. I, she did the technique with the arms above the head. I don't know. She I never tried jumping. that. Yeah, <laughs> I've never tried that. I just like try to tighten everything up and like plug my nose or something, thinking you're just gonna get so much water up there. So now we have Zoe Steinberg, who's up against Maddie Morris on the right. Oh, Maddie's like Maddie is charging. Ju yeah. It's weird. You see some people jump and you think they're like and hop around and. You think they're uh, going a lot quicker, but in on like, and then you see someone else up higher, so they're technically moving faster, but they don't look like they're jumping around as much. Yeah, Zoe topped out earlier today, was looking really strong, climbing quite fast. She was joking that her endurance is so poor right now that she's like, I have to climb fast or else I'll just fall <laughs> off the wall. I was like, I'm not sure it really works like that. Yeah, for me, I'm totally the opposite. Like. When I don't have endurance, the more I have to rest. But I'll have to say, this competition every year, I never trained for it. I might have climbed, like, one week on a rope before this competition, and I never really got pumped on it. And I think, like, I have the mindset when I'm in a competition, and you don't have to clip, so maybe it just seems like a longer boulder problem to me. <laughs> yeah, I just like the longest boulder yeah, problem. I never think about falling. All I think about is I kind of have the other competitor in the side view, and... I'm just like, I have to beat them, I have to beat them, I have to beat them, I need to get to the top first. So, yeah, like, falling is not even an option when I'm, like, when I'm climbing. I guess if it happened, it happened. But, uh, yeah, I only get scared right when I hit the top. But I'm like, oh, crud, what do I have? Now I have to get down from here. Of course you'd only, oh. oh. Is she going to let go? Let's see if she... I might, think she's going to let go. I think she's going to let go. Yeah. That might be smart. Oh, okay. But then your chalk bag gets wet. That's the part that I hate. It's that every time I got to the top, I'd always take my chalk bag off and like throw it into the on the side. I mean, the move would be if you want to drop off before the top is to quickly take your chalk bag off. But I don't think the holds are that good for that. No. And I mean, you're saving energy. And I know Sammy Singleton said she did that as well. Like when she knew she won, she dropped off. So... I mean, there's two different ways to think about it, and I always like to top it out just so I could take the chalk bag off. And you need multiple pairs of shoes. Have you done this competition before? No. 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 That's sweet, Alex. I <laughs> never know. Come on. I mean, this could have been your year. Uh, it, I mean, in a, in a <laughs> theoretical world, it could have been my year. <laughs> so how many pairs of shoes did you bring? I normally bring about three to four, so there's um, you use them the day before for this seating round, and then you try to dry them out the best you can. And then during the competition, you have at least two rounds, two to three rounds of dry shoes. And if you keep on advancing, then you try. We have like this heating little system back there. It's like I didn't um, even see that. Yeah, there's like these little like heaters above your head and like kind of around where Nina and them are in the athlete lounge area. And so everyone like hangs their chalk bags and their shoes above the heaters and. Sometimes like the the rubber kind of melts a little bit, so you gotta keep hmm. an eye on them. But uh, so not the yeah. most ideal setup. <laughs> no, that's not what they're meant for. That's not why they're there. <laughs> so Nina did not advance to the next round. That's correct, right? Yeah, and I would say that's an upset. That is definitely a surprise. Um, I didn't think she would go against Sammy Singleton so soon. And you know, the thing is that maybe Sammy had a worse time in the seating round because she might have gone, was more conservative, gone um, yeah. a little slower. I know that's what I accidentally did every year, and it kind of hosed me in the end. Because um, earlier on, I would usually go against the person that was that won the competition, yeah. and that person that won in my round was usually the fastest times. So I would accidentally go too slow and take it too safe because I was scared in the seating round, and that actually hurt me later on in the competition. So maybe Sammy kind of did that in this round, but it helped her, I guess. But they were close. So, yeah. It was, Nina, a, really, it was a really good race. She's like one of my best friends, Nina, so a little sad for her. But Sammy is yeah. a really sweet girl, and here she is again. She's very young. She's on the momentum team, and she's one of the you know young girls that I think we're all going to have to look out for and keep an eye on. I know. I was talking to a few people, and it looks like she's really trying to train for the Olympics. Yeah, and she's she's ripped. She's she's toned. 
Yeah. So this and I don't. Who is she competing against right now? That Hannah is, Tolson is on the left. Okay. Yeah, we have Hannah and Sammy, and uh, I don't know too much about Hannah. I know she's really strong, um, but again, like Sammy's super fast. So yeah, this will be interesting. Hannah Tolson got to the top in the seated rounds. Um, she goes to Gonzaga. She's the collegiate champion. Where did she go? Gonzaga in Washington. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I have no idea where that is, to be honest. I know where Washington is. Um, I know where Seattle is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's in that zone. <laughs> There's Leavenworth kind of close to Seattle, so that's a, that, an amazing climbing area outside, which I'm familiar with. But um, Leavenworth does have amazing climbing. It is true. I think the cool thing is all these... They're all so young. I know, and everyone is so young. I mean, we don't have the older crew here. I guess as in myself, we don't have Megan Martin. Alex likes the, to be older uh, Well, I'm almost 30, so I can say that now, right? Um, and Megan, I guess you can. Megan like, Martin's that's not fine. here. Michaela Keir, she's still younger, but she's older than some of the young kids like Sammy that are competing now. And, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's sad not to see them here, but it's cool to see the youth like coming up and rising. So It's super cool. It's really cool to see all these older women that have been at this sport for such a long time against these younger athletes. I think this round is going to be really close. Hannah was looking so strong in the qualifiers and was really fast, moving well. And she's a little bit taller, maybe, it looks like. I'm not quite sure. I, I can't really tell, I, but I feel like when I was standing next to them earlier that she is a little bit taller. I mean, I look taller than you right now, but it's only because I have heels on. So, I mean, I'm a full five foot two. Um, <laughs> that was cool. They just did like a reverse slow-mo that she just like fell right back up to the wall. Oh, yeah. I wonder. So they're showing a replay of who's going to move on because Zoe didn't actually move past the hold. Oh, wow. That when the girl before her fell, she... Yeah, so that'll be interesting to see who moves on. I think it'll be Zoe, but I'm not quite sure. I think so, right? I mean, because, look, she seems to have... Or they tied. Or no, but then it would come back to time. Right. And, and the other Zoe girl got won. there before her. So that will be interesting. I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah. So, no, you go. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I don't, I'm not sure why we haven't seen the other climbers yet. Um... As we're gearing, is this the set? This is the third round? Yeah, this is round two. Okay. We're about ready to go to the semis after this. It was cool. I was talking to Hannah earlier, and she said that she's trying to get collegiate climbing to be more of a thing. Okay. Because right now, they I didn't realize how many universities have climbing teams, but I know Gonzaga has one. There's another woman here, Maddie, who's at University of Houston. So she's trying to get younger climbers involved in high school level, collegiate level, which is really cool oh, for wow. our sport. That is really awesome. Yeah, I mean... There wasn't collegiate anything. I mean, I didn't go to college, but there still wasn't a collegiate team or nationals yeah. or anything back when I was when I was the age of being able to go to college. I guess I could still go. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's really awesome to see the U has a team. I think Westminster has a team here. Yeah. Um, and my good friend, Danny Papowski, he was, I think, like maybe the president of the team or however they were that or what position that he has but that he organized everything which was like super awesome to see and he is really enthusiastic about it so yeah it's and i heard there's like over 300 competitors at collegiate nationals i can't believe it it's i mean it just from when i started climbing to now there's so many more climbers there's so many more climbers in the gym and it, it's cool because the gyms have gotten better. Access has gotten better as more people get involved and more people become passionate about this sport. Oh, yeah. And, like, the gyms popping up and professional climbers coming in and, like, building gyms like Carlo. Carlo Traversi, that's competing here later. Um, he has a he has a climbing gym that he just um, he just opened, which is really awesome, which I've never got to We're check out. We're going to take for. a break here, and we will be back for semis. Perfect. I'm back with Nina Williams, who just got done... I'm actually really good friends with Nina, and I'm rooting for a lot of people. I was rooting for Nina. So what happened? Well, Sammy was faster than me. Like, yeah. honestly, I was a little bit surprised because in the seeding round, she didn't make it to the top the very first time, but she did the second. Um, and it's kind of hard to tell in seeding. Like, nobody gives it 100%. Uh, right. But honestly, she gave it 100% in that round, and it was, it was rad. I'm really happy for her. So when so it looked at one point that you looked over and sort of saw that she was ahead of you. Yeah. And so at what point did you, you're like, I really need to drop the hammer right now? 
Honestly, I didn't feel it because um, I injured my knee a little bit during the seating round, and my priority was just to get to the top okay. uh, without falling because falling would have been pretty bad for it. Not sure if I should have been competing anyways, but, you yeah. know, just have to try. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I was just worried about, like, being as controlled as possible. Yeah, so tell us uh, about your fall earlier. Yeah, so I, I've jumped off the top of the Seco wall multiple times in the past, and this time was really no different. I crouched at the lip, and I stepped off, but I think something about the way that my foot hit the water really, like, um, twisted my knee. And I'm not sure, again, what exactly happened, but it just aches um, on yeah. the inside, so... No, it looked. Uh, it did not look good. I saw Nina earlier, and she, all of a sudden, I see her walking towards me with an ice pack, and I was really concerned. She had a giant bruise. I was like, tough. "It's she's just tough. a bruise. It's just a bruise. It's fine." But. Just another highball for Nina. So she goes, oh, "I'll just do it again. It's no big deal." <laughs> yeah. So we're about ready to see Hannah Tolson up against Sammy. I think this is going to be really close, actually. Yeah. Man, Sammy is pulling it out. It is really impressive. It's really cool to watch her bring this level of performance in the final rounds. The show of the young guns. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Sammy's 16, right? And Hannah's in college, both young. Yeah, this is going to be really close. They're like neck and neck. Wow, this is awesome to watch. Wow, they're yeah, they're really well matched. It's interesting because Sammy has gotten way faster than the earlier rounds, which really just shows what kind of competitor she is. I know, it's such a sleeper. Oh, oh man, a foot slip. I didn't see that coming. Wow. Hannah making the... Move that we've seen a few other women do once their competitor drops off. Deciding to drop down as well to conserve energy for the final rounds. It's a really good strategy. It was funny because I just talked to Alex Puccio and she's like, eh, that's not really part of my strategy. And I was like, of course it's not part of yours, Alex. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> So, Nina, how hard would you say the root is? Uh, I'd probably give it at maybe 12B. Okay. Uh, there's two cruxes that aren't that much harder than the rest of the route. The route in its entirety is quite consistent. Um, each move is kind of the same after the other, but there are two. A move right before the big Death Star circle and maybe like three holds after the Death Star circle um, that are slightly noticeably harder than the rest of it. Uh, but really, once you get to those top holds, they're not quite as good as you want them to be, and it, you almost feel like you could just slip off at any moment. So it's definitely a little nerve-wracking. Of course, Nina would say that it's 12B. I am guessing it's a little bit harder, but <laughs> Nina's a sandbagger. She's known in this community to think things are easier than they are. Whatever, Nelly, you crush this thing. So now we have Delaney Miller and Zoe Steinberg. Zoe's been climbing fast. Yeah, Delaney is really consistent uh, as far as performance, but she's got almost too graceful of a style. Delaney has gotten second place in two other past Seco blocks, so I wonder if she'll be able to pull it out for first this year. It's really interesting watching them two race against each other because they have such different climbing styles. Yeah, Delaney needs to turn it on a little bit more. They're really neck and neck right now. Oh. Ooh. Nice. Slow and steady wins the race. Looks Ooh, like she's is she going to go to the top? I think she's going to go to the top. 
Yeager. She looks a little tired there. Yeah, she's got it. Psyched. Delaney's really stoked. She's just done so consistently well in this competition year after year yep. that she's entered. So now it's looking like Delaney versus Hannah for the final round. Right? That's just a hunch on my part. <laughs> I don't know. I want to see Delaney just rock it off the top. If she wins the finals, I really want her to just jump off the top. Yeah, do man. The most elegant, graceful swan dive. It is rough jumping off the top of that thing. I mean, I am the couch critic, so I can say that. But <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't all these competitors just doing gainers off the top? <laughs> Someone did do that one year. I heard that. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. So we're going to wrap it up until the final round. We'll be back with you in a few months. I'm here with Lonnie Tripoli, local, badass mom developer. And she's wearing the bathrobe. I know. These things are great, you know. Keep you warm, dry. So what inspires you to compete in something like this? It's a really, really beautiful wall, and it's so fun. It's got a little bit of everything, and, and uh, it's... I just really enjoy coming out here. I mean, the venue's great. The people are great. It's a fun event. Yeah, it's super fun. There's so many people here. I know you can't see behind us everything, but there are probably a few thousand people here cheering everyone on tonight. Of course, we have the locals who are, I'm sure, are the fan favorites, <laughs> like yourself. It's fun. It's a drive up the hill. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> so this is your second year, right? Yes. And tell me a little bit about your experience this year as opposed to years before. Um, it seems like the event's gotten bigger, which is great, because the first one was the first year. And then um, every year it just seems like more people are more psyched and the energy around it just keeps to be growing. It's great. What do you like most about this event? Hmm, um, the... I like watching the event, like the <laughs> Well, then you can't compete if you want to watch. Well, I know, but you can watch after, like while you're doing it. It seems like a, it, it's a fun event to watch. No, it's really cool. It's, I mean, it's the most fun climbing event for me to watch. Um, I love watching all the climbing competitions. My husband and I sit with our two dogs and watch them. We watch the live streams. But it's cool about this event because it combines something that's so unique to climbing because you can't, there aren't really soloing competitions. Yeah, no, this is definitely unique. It's like bouldering with, out of rope, and you can go as long as you want. It's amazing. You just keep on cruising. So do you, we have the yeah. final round coming up. We have Delaney Miller, who's gotten second before. And then we also have Hannah Tolson, who's a little bit newer on the scene. Yeah, she's local, um, college kid. She's great. She's so awesome. So we're about ready to get to the final round here. The women are getting ready. So what did you think about the route overall? That was a really fun route. It was committing. There were some committing moves. I was like, go! Go! <laughs> <laughs> I told my body to go, and I don't think it really was listened all the way. I can just imagine you <laughs> using that voice in your mind when you're climbing, and it makes me so incredibly happy. <laughs> yeah, it seems that there are really two big cruxes on the route. Yeah. One that's right before the Waco, and then one that's a little bit few moves after that. I didn't get to the ones after it, because I got that stuck down on the, the one before the Waco, and it's, it's a big committing move. It's really, really scary. <laughs> yeah, because at that point, I mean, what, you're... 30 feet off the ground? Yeah, I mean, I think rationally I'd be fine 30 feet. You know, you could probably land on your back and be just fine, but 
still there's the other brain that's like, ah! <laughs> we can rationalize a lot of things, right? But I think when you're staring at this big fall into the water, it's really hard to overcome that. Yeah, for sure. It's fun to do things that scare you, though. I agree. So it looks like we're waiting a little bit longer. How long have you been in Salt Lake for? I uh, grew up here. Okay. Yeah, I've been climbing for 20 years. Climbed in Little Cottonwood. Just love the canyons here. Keeps on pulling me back. <laughs> I've, I've traveled away, and then I keep on coming back, and I'm like, it's great here. And what, what do you think makes the climbing so special here? It's just, it's a lot of it. All around, different types, and the community is amazing, and I, I just love it. My yeah, kids so love it. Salt Lake is pretty incredible because... You have so many world-class climbing areas that are within driving distance. So close. And amazing climbing gyms. Yeah. Yeah, really amazing. It's great when you're a mom and you have no time and <laughs> you got to go climb for one hour. You climb as fast as you can. So is that what you say your training is when you have a free moment, you go to the gym? Yeah, that's the only time I can fit it in because I, I don't get like three-hour sessions. <laughs> and over... Because I think it's hard for, um, what's really cool is there are a lot of women that are competing and have competed over the years who are moms, who are working full time and are competing at a high level. And how do you find that balance? It's, it's, it's a lot. It's just wake up really early and it's like a big juggling act. And then one day I maybe I'll figure it all out. <laughs> Sometimes I'm sleep deprived. <laughs> just a little. Just a little, just a little bit. Little. It might be a little bit nuts, but nah, it's all right. <laughs> And you're a developer. Yep, computer programmer. Yeah. And how long have you been doing that for? Since I was 20, so oh, wow. 14 years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I enjoy coding. It's got a bit of climbing logic in it in a weird way. I don't know if Does that I... makes sense? I, I, can, I can see where you're coming problem from. Problem solving. Yes. It has problem solving elements which suit my brain. <laughs> Yeah, I know there are quite a few very successful climbers who are also developers. Yes, yeah, and engineers. So we've got the next round starting soon. But I've been saying that for a few minutes now. <laughs> but I, I promise you it's going to start soon. So how do you think, so you did it the very first year. Yes. And what do you think the level of competition is now compared to then? Do you think it's different? It, it, every year seems like it's a different group. And there's all these amazing young kids out there that, like, nobody knows who they are. And they're just crushing it. And it's amazing. So it's, it's exciting to see how it just changes over the years. I, I always, I'm always impressed and enjoy watching any new faces and the old faces. And It's it, really cool. It's fun. It's, for me, it's really inspiring to see all these young women yeah. that are excelling at such a high level. I know. And, you know, we were talking the other day that the difference between women and men climbing yeah. is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. We have women like Margot Hayes yeah. that are setting new standards and records. And it's, it's cool to see a sport like this where women actually can compete and do better than men. It's amazing. And... Just seeing like that, so, so much drive and determination from young kids. Like I have kids, and I want to see my kids have some drive in whatever they do in that much way. You know, like push the boundaries and make changes and whatever it is. You know, it's great. Yeah, the uh, few young women that were competing here have been on the youth teams for a while. A lot of them are trying to be hopefuls in the Olympics. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the Olympics. Me too. I think it's going to be really cool for climbing. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. I love watching um, climbing competitions on my computer, which is <laughs> <Just> on YouTube. <laughs> You're like, when I have that five-minute window. That's I what I do. I, <laughs> I don't watch TV, but that's what I'll watch. <laughs> like, it's fun. You know, interesting, I'm, I'm not quite sure how the qualifying ultimately is going to work, because I've heard a few different formats that have been proposed for the Olympics, but... It's going to be really interesting to see who from the U.S. will represent. Yeah. Because there are so many young climbers that are coming up and doing really well at these competitions, and that might actually go to the Olympics. True. So it looks like earlier they were trying to determine whether or not 
two of the competitors who had gotten higher, whether Zoe and um, they did a little feedback to see whether Zoe had actually committed to a hold or not before dropping off. Does that happen often? Well, I think this is the first year that they're uh, trying to seed a third place. Right. So I'm guessing that that is what that's for. The other option is they can just send the two up and they can right. compete for a third. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I want to see another race. I know. That's I think what they I want to see. Another race because they didn't know that they were competing for that. So right. they should let them compete for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, climbing around here, what sort of things are you most psyched on? So, as I'm getting older, I'm starting to want to change from bouldering to roots. Okay. And so, I'm starting to actually like make that transition. I'm 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 enjoying climbing on a rope more. Oh, cool. Than I ever have, and that's new for me because. I love bouldering, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a fun feeling because it's like doing something new after 20 years, like that feels new to me, so it's good. And, and I think there are a lot of people in this sport who have reached a place where you have, where they've been doing a certain discipline for so long, and they go, you know what, I want to try something different and new. Yeah. You can also try ice climbing. I, I could try ice climbing, <laughs> except I really don't like screaming barfies. <laughs> well, thank you. We are going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with you soon. So we took a really long break, and the reason is Sammy, who is the third place finisher, actually got hurt when she fell into the water. So they're trying to figure out now what to do about that position. Right now, we have the final round going on. We have, or actually, no, we have, screen's not right, but we have Hannah Tolson on the left, Delaney Miller on the right, final round going. Ignore the names at the bottom, those are incorrect. This is gonna be really good. Delaney is moving not maybe as fast as Hannah on the left, but she's moving at a more consistent pace. Hannah's doing really well. But Delaney's catching up. This is going to be really close, I think. Hannah might have this. I think she's got this. She's past the last crux. We have the new champion. Really awesome to see. Hannah is very surprised. I'm not very surprised. She was looking so strong in the qualifiers. All the previous rounds, climbing so fast with confidence. Delaney's topping out. Another great performance by Delaney, getting second place. Consistently, year after year, doing well at this comp, which I think is pretty rare these days for someone to do so well for so long. They're going to do their final victory jump. Maybe a flip? Oh, this is great. Synchronized. That's awesome. So that was the women's final round. So awesome. Really strong showing from these younger athletes who have really brought the competition today. You see the replay, Hannah just owning the top. We are going to take a quick break and then we'll be back for the men's climbing.
information? Uh, I live in Spokane. I go to school at Gonzaga University. So I train there. Awesome. So Came out here all the way from the Pacific Northwest just to try your hand, and you're going home with 5,000 big ones. Uh, I mean, I don't even know what it's about. I'm just getting dumped on it by the cash. Tell me, tell me more about yourself. Yeah, so I go to school at Gonzaga. Um, I'm a senior. I study math. Um, I'm originally from Phoenix, and I climb in the collegiate circuit. Okay. Yeah, so that's usually where you'll see me if you see me climbing, yeah. But uh, Seagull Block Masters is better than the collegiate circuit, right? They don't give you 5,000 buckaroos. De yeah, definitely not. So it's a great energy here, great crowd. I love climbing here. Super fun night. <laughs> so would you say that you're a huge fan of the Utah crowd, and then when you admit to, d admit to that, that they're going to go wild? Yes. She loves the Utah crowd. Come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, big thank you to Hannah Tolson, 5,000 big ones. Woo! Camaraderie, hugging at the top, jumping down. That's the kind of thing we come to expect for 2018, Seco Block. In place, we got Delaney Miller coming in from Team Texas. We're going to give her 2,250 bucks. And in first place, the grand champion taking home a prize of $5,000 cash. Give it up for your girl, Hannah Tosin! Woo! Battle Come on, Black Girls! Yeah, these are your champions, let's go! 2018 Seco Block Masters brought to you by the North Face, thank you! All right, take that bow. Give it up one last time. You all ready to see the men start hucking meat over the water? Let's do this. All right. Looks like the centers have already got ahead of us. They've already adjusted the round. Welcome back. I'm here with Boone Speed, the man, the myth, the legend. As you can see, I've also gotten taller. <laughs> Welcome, Boone. Thanks. Thanks for having me. We're about ready to start to see the men's rounds. First up, we have Jimmy Webb and Drew Mack. Jimmy was looking super strong in the qualifiers. No surprise there. Climbing really fast. No surprise there. Yeah. And, and then uh, who else? Who's next? First, we're going to see Jimmy and Drew. Then we're going to see Joey Katana. And we're going to see Devin Hammonds after that. Okay, cool. And then, uh, yeah, so the men's field is really strong. And they, we've got a lot of people in from uh, international crowd, uh, from uh, Felipe from Brazil. We've got, uh, what's, his, what's the guy from Chile? There are a few people from Chile. Okay. There's Facundo. And then we also have Lucas. Lucas, yep, yep. So it's cool. It's an international field. Um, and uh, I got to find my stride here. <laughs> <laughs> It's really cool to see such a strong men's field. Earlier today, I was talking to a few of the competitors. They say it's about 13B. A bunch of the men topped out earlier. As the day went on, we saw more and more tops. I think that the rounds are going to be fairly close. Jimmy looks like a really good contender to be into finals. Matty Hong looked really strong. Carlo Traversi looked good as well, although he did have an injury towards the beginning. He fell and actually bruised his tailbone. So all of those guys are looking really strong for the final round. And they've all done really well here before. All of those guys are super strong. So um, it, it, that's, that's, it's really exciting to have all those guys here. And Arian from, uh, from South Africa also. Arian was looking really yeah. great. It, fast, super fast. You could tell he's like ready to, ready to throw down. It was so. funny. He said that he didn't feel that fast at the beginning, which was crazy because he was yeah. just climbing really well. Yeah. He, was, he had the right head space, and he was, like, really, really showing that he was here to uh, win, I think. Yeah, he yeah. said that he's really psyched to do well in the finals, and he wants to win this. Arian also said something really funny how he said that as he got higher on the wall, he felt that the water was rising with him. And I said... Arian, I think you're literally the only person in this field that would say that. Yeah, no, he he was bold and he's 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 ready to he's ready to go. And then Jimmy's always ready. Drew. So this is the best this is the best event. I've been here for six years and this is the best event I've seen. Um, it's the it's 
really exciting to see all the people here. No award trade show. Um, just seems like it's all growing up, for sure. Yeah, it's such a fun event. There's a lot of music going on. People are psyched. And just to watch this kind of caliber of climber is just a really good treat. I mean, it's a big treat for me to watch this. All right, here we go. So watching Jimmy and Drew. Drew actually was just in rifle where he did 10, 13 Ds or harder. So he's coming off of that trip, feeling really strong, although he said he's been feeling a little bit tired from that. Jimmy, of course, is just an absolute animal. Yes, he's not, he's not messing around at all. Drew is psyched. He's climbing. He's climbing a lot better. He's he didn't make that dyno. Than, yeah, he's climbing better than he was in the uh, in the qualifying or the seating round for sure. Oh. Drew's off. Jimmy will probably take it to the top. So now he's just going to keep looking at, just going to keep getting the route dialed. Um, so that in the, in the in the in the events down the way, in the next event, he'll have it even more dialed. Yeah, it, I didn't even think it was possible, but Jimmy, each round seems like he's getting faster. I was talking to him a little bit earlier, and he's starting to sport climb more and more. He's a very prolific boulder, has flashed a ton of V13s, and now is transitioning to sport climbing. That'll be interesting to see how that all pans out. His, he's such a strong boulder. He's so strong. Yeah. I think it's going to pan out well for him. I'm sure. <laughs> I heard something. Carlo Traversi was saying something earlier how he's only climbed 14B, but I think he's going to climb quite a bit harder once he starts more climbing for sure. more. For sure. That's a good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next we have Devin Hammonds, who you see on the screen here. That's not Devin, Drew Mack. It's not Drew Mack. Not Drew Mack. We, we already saw Drew Mack. Devin is from Ogden, 17 years old in high school. I think he's local. A little, a little bit. Uh, he's a little bit starstruck, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he is. He's so excited. He's so to be starstruck, here. and he's super psyched to be here. Yeah. We have Joey on the left. Which, which is normal. I mean, it's normal to be starstruck when you're 17 and you're all of a sudden like in the presence of the people that you've read about or seen. And, and uh, Joey's a root setter, climber, in school as well. So he's super psyched. His whole family's out from Los Angeles. Oh, are they really? That's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. I know there's a big LA contingent that yeah, is out here right now. That, yeah. Joey's climbing really well, yep. strong and confident. He has topped it out, and I'm not sure if Devin's topped this out yet, right? He hasn't. Okay. Devin hasn't topped it out. So Joey did get to the top in the seating round. I love it how they're really bringing it in this round. Devin just fell off. We'll see if Joey goes to the top just to learn the route a little bit more. And he's climbing possessed. Those holes are dead flat, so it's like because uh, I went up on I went up and felt it, felt it, and it was like, whoa! Uh, these holes are, I mean, there's a lot of opposition, a lot of flat holds, and on an overhanging wall, a flat hold is is really difficult. There's not there's a few crimps that you can kind of to get between those, but um, it's very disconcerting to be on a flat hold. Um, on an overhanging wall 30 or 40 feet up off the, off the water, for sure. It doesn't feel solid. No, you're not solid <laughs> up there. <laughs> yeah, he's just going for it. He's all, he's just psyched. So we have next round coming up. The men are looking really strong. A lot of them climbing significantly faster than the previous round. This is Luco. Lucas. 
part of the South American contingent. <laughs> I think these guys are all really excited to be here as well. They're so excited. We also have Nicholas on the right, youth competitive climber. I think this is going to be really close. Yeah. So the way that it, this whole competition is set up, kind of a little bit like basketball, March Madness, you have the top seated person going against the last seated person. And as it goes further into the middle of the competition, you should theoretically see people that are closer together. That dino is, um, it's not trivial right there. You know, it's, uh, there's a, a commitment factor for sure. As someone who really <laughs> tries not I know. I can't. <laughs> I would say all of them are not trivial. Most of the men have been doing the dyno, though, quite easily. It's really yeah. the separation after the Hueco where you start to see people get really tired. Yeah, they've been up. They've been up on the route three, four times now, right? Yep. So they're pretty familiar with it. Nicholas got fourth on, in Nicholas. nationals, represented the U.S. Really excited to be here as well. One of the many young men that are here in high school competing, showing up, doing a great job. Yeah, new blood um, for the for this yep. type of competition. Um, it's uh, and it's a little bit different. Um, the mindset. I mean, it's not. It does, it does take a climber to do it, obviously. The climbing is properly hard, no getting around that. And, but then you have, to, you have to be fit enough that you can do the route over and over, and you have to, there's a speed element, obviously. Oh yeah. And he's so stoked. Nicholas is so <laughs> stoked. <laughs> so cool to see that. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't win, but That's he is so really cool. psyched. Nicholas just put on an amazing performance, getting to the top, doing a lot better can, than the previous rounds. Yeah, and you can tell that he's just stoked. I mean, that's the... You can just see it in his face. Like, that's that's worth the price of admission right there for him. So I'd love to say something a little bit about um, about the the you know the North Face and their Global Climbing Day. I'm going to be out in New York on the 18th um, at the Cliffs um, in LIC, and and um, it's really cool. Like we did it last year, and there's uh, there was a big turnout, a lot of people. Um, and it's it's really cool. I remember you know getting into climbing, and it um, you know the the first day I did it, it changed my life. And, and I and I it, it's it's exciting to see other people, more of the general public being exposed to it. And it's such a great community. I mean, look around, and uh, and so anyway, join us, join me, and in, in the you know, on and the eight, on the and, and you. All of us. Um, I'll be in. I'll be in uh, New York. Where will you be? I'll probably be in Boulder. Okay, you'll be in Boulder, and and uh, and there's what a hundred and I think a hundred and eighty participating gyms, and so look in your area and see. You know, take your friends that have never gone before. It's all. It's it's uh, it's going to be a great day. It's free. It's free to the free. Yeah, for it's the, an incredible opportunity. People, I'm so. going to go to all the gyms in Boulder that Sick. day. Yeah, <laughs> take different friends. All right, here we go, Carlo is uh carlo's very very good at this format i mean he's been really close uh almost every year he's been a contender and he's uh and and, and keenan is just bold and he's so psyched to be here keenan is really excited to be here he's a developer or he's done a lot of bouldering development out in yosemite and tuolumne he also has the best mustache. He definitely has the best mustache. Carlo is a machine. He's such a machine. He's always been and so strong and consistent. You can see a little bit of gamesmanship in Carlo. He's not, he's not getting worried. He's not 
So there he goes. Oh, man. Carl's going to top. You could kind of see, uh, you could see a little bit of a veteran's mentality in Carlo there. Not too worried about getting behind on that. And uh, sure enough, it paid off. I mean, he made it to the top. Uh, didn't look like it exerted him too much. No, so. he doesn't look that tired. Yeah. Yeah, Carlo just opened a new gym in Sacramento. It's I've, I haven't been yet, but I've talked to him about it. It's supposed to be sick. I hear it's amazing. Yeah. So you should check it out if you're in the Sacramento area. Go support a climber who's contributed a lot to this sport, developed a lot of boulders around the country, climbing at a high level for yeah. a long time. And I think Jimmy's living out there in Sacramento now That's as right. well. So these guys are... There's like a Sacramento exodus. Yeah, I know. Everyone's going to Sacramento. Yeah, yeah. Next we oh, have Maddie Hong. What a great dude. Matty Hong is like such a great guy. Super good, super creative, great photographer, um, just additive to the sport, just a great guy. Um, I think he's a favorite, honestly. I think maybe he might have a little bit of a man crush on Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, you won't I be mean, the first. Maybe, no. maybe, maybe. He's just such a pleasant dude to be around, you know? Um, and multi-talented, so it's like it's you know he's a creative. He's also a good climber, and he's a good ambassador for the he's sport a great of climbing. For the sport. Um, Just climbed one of the hardest grades in our sport. Yeah, I did. We have Eric Jerome, who recently did really well at the nationals. Used to climb for University of Utah. Eric's doing really well, climbing yeah, fast. Eric, Eric had a little bit of trouble um, in the in the seeding round. He's doing really well right now. He's, I would say, drastically improved since yes, the seeded round. Yes. And Maddie is just methodical, smooth, calculated. You can see Maddie doesn't seem to be trying hard. Yeah. Yeah. He feels, I, I think, and I don't think we've seen Maddie's best yet. <laughs> Maddie topped out. Not a big surprise there. There he goes. Next up, we have Facundo. Facundo and Nick Smith. Nick Smith is a local, somewhat of a Boulder local. We see him around and rifle a bunch. He travels to New River Gorge, works for USA Climbing. Kind of a quiet crusher. You always see him at the crag, really nice and psyched. And then he'll just crush something very quietly and come back. Really nice guy. Facundo's part of the Chilean uh, That's right. contingent, right? Yeah, he was the first Chilean boulder to climb V15. Oh, so wow. a highly accomplished boulder. I have not been to Chile, but I hear the scene is amazing. It's down amazing. There. Yeah. I think was Cedar telling me about it down there? Did he has he been down there? Cedar's yeah. been to Chile quite a bit. Yeah. Really beautiful area, awesome climbing. Facundo and his sister actually compete. She's a well-known climber in her own right. Compete against each other or? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that sibling rivalry. Facundo's taking the early lead. Gundo looking back to see where Nick is. Yeah. Lots of energy in the crowd tonight. The light's getting really beautiful. Nice sunset. Yeah. yeah it's, it's really an epic. It's actually setting. it's an epic setting, and 
the temperatures are actually really good for climbing, I They're think. Good. They're not, and, and actually fine for hanging out. It's been cold here before. That's what I heard. I you know, it's it, we've had cold weather. We're going to know the showman working the crowd. Nice. Nick Smith is still on the wall. I think he's <laughs> going to try to top it out. I think Nick's going to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh. The right hand blew, and there oh. he goes. <laughs> I thought he had it. All right, well, that was good. We've got uh, two more two more in this bracket. Arian is next, who's the third seed. It'll be interesting to see if he puts up, if he pushes the gas on this or if he just kind of, uh, I don't know, if there's some gamesmanship on his too because I do think he's got an extra gear. I think he's definitely hoping to make some of the more – make it to the next round so i my oh, guess yeah. is going to try to conserve yeah. as much as possible yeah. we have garrett on the right it's great to see the the young generation yeah glare mcclellan is in high school 17 years old he said that he wants to go to college for engineering He's got it all planned out. <laughs> kind of like you did, Boone, right? Oh, yeah. Totally planned out. Oh, they're working the crowd. My life has gone exactly how I mapped it out. <laughs> you can see the remnants of the old graphics on the wall. I like the new graphics a lot more. I like it a lot. might be trying to go a little slower oh, oh he okay that was kind of almost a bobble that was surprising actually that to was that. uh that was maybe lesser climbers would have fallen there yes aaron's gonna slow it down and get methodical you do not want to make that mistake up there Garrett, oh. All right. All right, jumping off to conserve energy. Probably He's smart, especially after that bobble. Yeah, yep. Later. You're off camera. Sorry. Where? You got big heart. Yeah, I'm killing it. <laughs> we have the final round. We have Felipe Camargo, multi time Brazilian champion. He's going against John Fokker. Yep. I'm excited to watch this win. To be. It's cool to see the local kids. It's so cool. I mean, I love, I love that it's an international field, but I like to see the local kids come out and kind of coming out of the woodwork in a way. Right. And we've had a few people come out of, kind of out of the woodwork and win this thing. Uh, Claire, um, a few years ago, and yeah, it was people that not not necessarily the favorites to win. Right. There's just so many good climbers now. They're, I'm they're never everywhere. Surprised. I'm never surprised no. when I see yeah. someone like Sean come here and do really well. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, is that this takes a, a skill set that somebody that's really good that you know is might actually be a little bit too afraid to actually compete up right. here. Whereas somebody that's maybe. Oh! Sean one handed the dyno, barely caught it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, but you're right. I mean, it takes something in addition to just what you see in a normal competition. Exactly, climber. exactly. It's hard to identify who's going to be really good at this just from your local climbing gym. Right. Because there is that X factor of like. Ah, oh, Sean's off. No, oh, nice. Good effort. I think Felipe will probably. Oh, he's going to try to conserve and jump down, it looks like. Yeah. Cool. So this is his first time deep water soloing, other than I think uh, like a kind of a low low spot someplace. He said, "Yeah, <laughs> the local river." Yeah. Flashback. Wow. With the woman's winner, Hannah Tolson. Hi. How psyched are you? I'm really excited. It's very surreal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you were doing super well in the Cedar Grounds. Yeah, yeah. In my bracket, round. you were definitely a favorite. I thought you'd make the final round for sure. Thank you. Well, what? yeah, I mean, I actually had kind of the fortunate experience of not having to climb to the top of the wall every round, which really kind yeah. of helped me out in the end. So it was really awesome. It was a great comp. Yeah, you got really emotional at the top. I mean... Oh my imagine. goodness. Yeah, I mean, it was just this crazy energy. And I mean, I thought about the money, and it was, yeah, um, yeah really kind of a crazy moment for me. So it's really cool. I'll How never are you going to spend your money? Probably climbing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll buy a new pair of shoes. Yeah, <laughs> I think mine are wet. Climbing shoes or like high heels? Climbing shoes, okay. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just riding the high right now. Cool. Did you did you have a sense of how close Delaney was when you were climbing? Um, I kept looking over, and I felt like she was within a few moves of me. Yeah. So I knew that I had to keep kind of hitting the gas. Um, Sammy Singleton, my race with her felt really close. It was really time. close. Yeah, I kept kind of like seeing her in my peripheral, and she was like right there. So um, I almost felt more intimidated in that situation. She had a really unfortunate foot slip, but I know. she's such a strong little climber, so really impressive. So did you feel scared at all? Um, I definitely felt more scared in the practice round when there wasn't really any crowd or, yeah. you know, it was much more laid back, which almost made it scarier. Um, but with everyone here, I mean, it's impossible not to get kind of caught up in the moment. Yeah. yeah. Because the energy is amazing here. Oh, my God. It's seriously my favorite climbing comp I've ever been to, I think. Uh, crazy energy, crazy crowd, really fun climb. So. Is so your first time here? My second, actually. Second, okay. Yeah, I was here in 2015 also. So it's been a while. <laughs> was the route, do you remember the route in 2015? Yeah. Was it a lot harder? I feel like it was easier. about the same. Okay. I, both of them, I would say, are maybe like. 12C, 12B, right in there. Okay. Um, so she's upgrading a little bit from some other people that were here. <laughs> yeah, the route in 20, I mean, 2015 was crazy because there were, that was the rain year, right? It was the year it got rained out. Um, so in 2015, for those people that weren't here, there was this huge thunderstorm that came in. Yeah. And so they actually ended up having to cancel the competition halfway through in 2015. Um, okay, now we have Jimmy Webb and Joey Katama. It's close. Joey knows he's going to have to bring it. Definitely. Now, what year? Ha, Jimmy has won before, right? Jimmy's won a few times. Yeah. He was in the lead, I think, during the rain year. He said that he's won it twice, and he gets maybe three times if you count the year that it rained. Okay. He's hustling. He's hustling. Joey's keeping up really well, though. Yeah. Come on, guys. Looks like Jimmy's gonna take this. Yeah. It's gonna be hard to beat. But I mean, good for Joey. He kept up throughout the whole beginning section, and he's a really young guy. I know Joey was just so excited. I mean, he's psyched to be here like all of you guys are. And I'm yeah. sure he's just happy to make it to the top. Well, and I mean, I've had this experience where it's just amazing to race against people who you've looked up to for so long. I'm, um, you know, Jimmy is one of the best in the world, right. so it's very fun to race against your idols. <laughs> it's playing with People the in the background are rooting for a flip. Oh no! 
I think it's a little too early for Jimmy to do that. I'd say save it. That's right. <laughs> Although if he does a flip every round, I wouldn't be disappointed. Has anyone ever done a flip? I think someone did a someone. There's a rumor that someone did a backflip. Oh my god. That would mean turning around yeah. on the very edge of the wall. That's insane. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Maybe he'll do it later. Yeah, maybe, maybe if he wins. I don't think he could pay me to do a backflip, but... I, I mean, I couldn't do it. I, I, I mean, I can't even <laughs> do a backflip, so... No, I know. Without a doubt, I don't think I would be able <laughs> to do a backflip. Especially after climbing. Right. You know, you get up there and you're just like totally wiped. You can barely breathe. <laughs> As if the elevation here wasn't crazy enough. <laughs> so now we have Lucas. And Carlo. And Carlo. And is this Lucas's first time in this comp? Yes. Yeah. So three of the South American climbers, who are actually all friends, came together. Oh, okay. And they're from, are they all from Chile or? They're from Chile and Brazil. Brazil. Awesome. I think they have the names. Okay. <laughs> That's not Carlo. Carlo was the other person. <laughs> we know Carlo. We know Carlo. <laughs> So this is the four or five race, huh? This will be a close one. This should be really close. Seriously, it's so cold right over there. Is it really? Yeah. When they had... Um, that's not Facundo either. Huh? <laughs> they just flashed Facundo's name on there. That's, that's not Facundo. <laughs> some, name, some name problems. No, yeah, they'll put my name next on there. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And you're kind of getting ready and you're on deck. It's like freezing and you're like shaking and you don't know if you're shaking because you're nervous, you know, nervous or, cold. or if you're just cold. But well, you guys have a hot tub you can sit in, right? It's not hot yet. Oh, <laughs> no. I know. Once That's... it's hot, I'll be right over there. But... You can find me there. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to congratulate Hannah later, she'll be in the hot tub. Yeah. It's hopefully hot. <laughs> right? Ale. Yeah, this will be really close. Whoa. Oh, wow. Move for move. Oh. Wow. Oh, my gosh. He wants to win. Move for move. It's like Carlo is pulling ahead a Carlo little bit. Carlo ahead. Yeah. Oh no! Wow. Looks like Lucas messed up the sequence a little bit. No. Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh! Carlo takes it. Awesome. That was one of the closer matchups we've seen. Yeah, I feel like the races this year haven't been as neck and neck. It seems like the route has separated. I, I want to see the photo finish. Yeah. That's what I want to see. <laughs> I want to see the photo finish for Ned. I don't know if I want to be part of the photo finish. You're like, I don't want to be part of that. Just in case I'm losing Ned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can leave that for the boys. So I actually... I'm like zero for five for successfully throwing my stuff off the top of the wall. I don't know if the wind just like hates me, but every time I've tried to like oh. chuck something off, it just like comes back and lands right in the pool. I think I did see you earlier throw your chalk bag and then some really nice guy reached his hand out and grabbed it before it went to the pool. I think that was the only one that like succeeded. <laughs> and it was because of some guy's huge wingspan. <laughs> this is why I don't play throwing sports. No. Well, at least you got one sport you're really good at, right? Right, right. There you go. <laughs> oh. Get low. At first I thought he was going to do something crazy, but... <laughs> he looked like he was gearing uh, yeah. up for it. Yeah. Maybe like a somersault. <laughs> I think you'll get your somersault. Yeah. I hope you'll get your somersault. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 
I want someone to give me what I want tonight. That's what I want. I want a big <laughs> jump. Okay, who do we have now? We have Agundo on the left. Is it? Okay. We have Agundo and Maddie. You can hear in the background they're talking about the Hong Dynasty. Maddie Hong's parents, mm -hmm. super prolific climbers. Karen and his mom, his dad, um, Steve, have developed so many routes really? across the U.S. Kind of like the Rabbitohs, huh? Really gifted climbing family. I love family. the climbing families. Three, two, one, go! Come on, Alex! taking an early lean. This is initially closer than I thought it would be. Wow. Maddie sort of sees Facundo yeah. taking a head and has started to pick up the pace. Now, has Facundo topped this yet? Facundo's topped it. Yeah, it's topped. To the viewers in South America, hello, South America. Hello, South America. Cheer for your climbers. Facundo might win this. No, let's go. This will be a major upset. The crowd behind us is going wild. Really close race. For a while, I thought Bakuno had it, then Maddie had it. <laughs> They're it both looks good like friends. he got a little crossed up at the very end. Yeah. Yeah. They're good friends, both North Face athletes. Yeah. They're both out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> they need a minute before they can jump off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now they're going to do it. Oh, some whole dance? No. Some friendship jumps? So the, you're not actually jumping in the air bubbles, right? No. You, I think the air bubbles are, like, behind you, and they're just kind of there to, like, Disrupt break the, the surface. Yeah. I thought, for some reason, I thought that you'd be jumping in the air bubbles into people. I hoped, yeah. but it, I mean, it, it is a far jump to get to the air bubbles. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, he looks like he kind of got some air bubble action. All right, so this is the last matchup of the round of eight. Yep. We've got Aryan and Felipe coming up next. Oh, my gosh. What a close match. They added jugs at the top, right? So that you wouldn't yeah. have to mantle. Yeah. So originally they didn't have any jugs, which is a little sketchy because, you know, it's flat. Like, it's not a great top out. But I think the fear of someone <laughs> falling while trying to swing, right. a, swing a leg over was... And then the down climb jugs, of course. But it doesn't really seem like anyone is using them in this no. round. No. But honestly, like, the jump takes almost more energy out of you than the climbing does. It's exhausting to, like, psych yourself up and then to hit the water, swallow about a gallon of pool water. <laughs> Arin and Felipe, head to head. This will be good. It's close. Arian didn't go to the top last round. Looks like he was trying to conserve some energy. Oh, okay. It looks like a lot of the guys have the same beta throughout the whole section. It's kind of a straightforward climb, I guess. Yeah, you see most of them doing the same oh, thing. No. Oh, no. See? That seems to be tripping out quite a few guys. It's really close. Really close. Come on. Yeah. Oh. Oh, another good race. Oh. Orion had a close miss there. He bobbled. Yeah. yeah. He looked so strong throughout, though. I think it was just that one crisscross sequence. 
And when you're moving that fast, it's easy to kind of get oh, I'm sure. crossed up a little bit. I mean, I never move that fast, but if I were, and, I but can if imagine. You, if, you, if you were moving that fast. We're just going to complete this round here, and then we'll go to the next round as we get closer to the finals. This is exciting. I think we're going to see amazing races coming up. I know. Well, all the guys still left. They're oh, so fast. Oh. You just saw someone use the drugs. You know, sometimes it's a health thing, too. Like, I know if people have, like, sensitive ear jobs yeah. or, you know. Everybody's down climbing too. They both seem pretty out of breath, so understandable. When I tried to down climb in the seating round, it was actually kind of scarier than jumping off the top. Well, there's more time to think about it, right? Yeah. Well, and it's not that much shorter, you know? Welcome back. I'm with my final guest, Cedar Wright, my husband. Very excited for him to be here. He weaseled his way on to the camera again. They were afraid that I was going to maybe go over the top, say something I would regret later. But I am excited to be here for the men's finals, or semifinals. And first up, we're going to have um, Jimmy Webb and Carla Traversi, uh, two legends in our sport, um, two incredible, incredible boulders and sport climbers. Um, but man, Jimmy Webb, he's a force. He's won this thing, what, three times? Twice. Well, three if you count the year that they had that torrential rainstorm. So he's won it, we'll give it to him three times. Uh, he's, a, he's a crusher um, and he's extremely explosive and he's just so fast, he's gonna be hard to beat, I feel like. Cedar, why aren't you competing? Um, I'm not competing because it just seems a little too easy and not scary enough and uh, no, I mean, you know, because these, guys, these athletes are incredible, and I'm just not that good. <laughs> <laughs> I need to just accept my place in the climbing community, just here in the front of the camera of my lovely wife. Um, this is such a great competition. I'm really excited to be here. I think this is, as far as like a spectator sport and a way to bring climbing to, uh, to the public, it's such a great way to do it. It's so exciting to watch. There's so much drama. It's so cool to see people go head to head and really duke it out and just the level of athleticism but also what I appreciate is boldness and being able to keep your head together when you're 50 feet off the ground and going for like a 513 crux that's impressive to me and it's really cool to see who rises to the top in this competition and it's such a cool spectator sport for people that aren't into climbing because they see two people racing up the wall I think a lot of times at least you know some of my friends and family that don't climb and they watch climbing competitions they don't really know how hard anything is Totally, but they, they know when someone is in first place or in second place, and they know the consequences of falling off this wall and that it can be brutal. And, uh, you know, we know that uh, Carlo actually has slapped his ass hard twice, and he said that it's going to be a really painful uh, flight home. And so hopefully he doesn't, uh, you know, land there again and, and uh, have to go home in a wheelchair. I mean, this is, this is some, you know, it's serious. You know, you can really hurt yourself. I know Emily Harrington also... Um, hit her butt pretty hard she's got a bruised tailbone Nina Williams tweaked her knee I mean you know it's like it's like climbing the way it should be there should be some consequences it should be a little scary you know, you the, know? the climbing competition that Cedar Wright likes to watch yeah exactly I want to see some carnage I want to <laughs> I want to see people scared you know and so to me this is like a, a wonderful um, spectator sport but a wonderful competition and uh, I hope to see this uh, this type of competition grow I have Hope to see it, uh, you know, in more places and in maybe in different formats. It'd be awesome to see an on-site format. It'd be awesome to see uh, more difficulty. Even, like, bringing the hype down and focusing more on, like, pure difficulty would be really interesting. I think there's a lot of, uh, of different um, kind of styles and formats to explore within this deep water solo style. Um, so it's a great competition. Bone crushers. And, uh, you know, Carlo's living in Sacramento. Jimmy's living on the road, chasing some of the hardest boulder problems in the country and the world. These two are two of the strongest boulders in America, and it's head-to-head. -head. Carlo is pulling ahead. It looks, oh, this could be a huge upset, folks. This could be. But you never huge. know. It's, this is a big turning point right here in the route. And now we're neck and neck again. Uh, yeah, Jimmy's uh, catching up. Jimmy is pulling ahead. Folks, this is what makes him the champion of the Seco Block. This is oh, what makes him the one to beat. Here he is, pulling ahead of Carlo. Jimmy. Carlo's going to have to pull off a miracle to come back from this one, folks. 
And in three, two, one, Jimmy Webb continues his legacy as one of the best Seagull Block competitors ever to compete in this sport. Incredible. That was a great round. Jimmy did such an awesome job. Was exp I mean, every single round he's been dominating. He, he's, I, I, you know, it's interesting because you can look at this as a sport climb, but really this is like power endurance bouldering. And I think that's one of Jimmy's specialties. And he's also, he's a great high ball boulderer. He's super bold. And, and I think it just allows him to really just dominate in this style. It's a completely unique style of competition. And uh, it's really exciting to, 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 to see the, the way that, that he's like risen to the top and been such a dominant competitor in this sport. Really one of the coolest types of, of competition in America and in the world, in my opinion. It was funny because when I was talking to the other men earlier, when they would describe Jimmy Wood, they're like, he is the ultimate beast. Totally, yeah, and he beasted that route. And he's, you know, he's just able to, I think, to just drop the hammer harder than anyone else can. I think it's that power endurance. He doesn't stop to shake, you know? And it's like in this kind of race, you stop to shake. You, two shakes could be the difference between topping and, and being in first place and, and, and losing. And so, you know, it's that power endurance that he has that's really allowing him to dominate. And then also, I think, just a level of boldness. You know, right. I think he's really not worried about falling. And, uh, you know, he's... He's not going to down climb. He's going to jump from the top. And, uh, you know, so he just has this, I don't know, he's like old school man. He's like, you know, the kind of guy that you want to, like, you know, chop down all the trees in the forest with his bare hands. He'd make a great lumberjack, but also he's an incredible boulder. And uh, he's the one to beat. He's the one to beat. You know, if I was going to put my money on him, yeah, I'd put all of it on, on Jimmy Webb, I have to admit. Yeah, well, I put just, all of our money on Jimmy Webb. Is that okay? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Our nest, egg, our nest egg is on you, Jimmy, so yeah, don't hose us. But um, yeah, so far it's been a really exciting competition to watch. It was really cool in the women's uh, leg of the competition to see the dark horse come and take it. Um, it's always great to see someone just kind of come out of the blue and be dominant. And now, here we've got, who do we have here, honey? Maddie and Aryan. We've got Maddie Hong and Aryan DeCock. And this rat, this rat is hard, but I think that DeCock is harder. And he's an incredible, incredible competitor and uh, South African bone crusher. He's climbed D15 and he 14D. is 14D. He's uh, married to Paige Clausen, one of the top sport climbers in America. And he is a dark horse. His family actually makes, uh, they supply most of the table grapes uh, for Europe coming out of South Africa. So he's a farmer, he's a bone crusher, he's a, a hang gliding pilot. Oh, here comes but Maddie. Does he have what it takes? No, he doesn't. Maddie is dropping the hammer. And Maddie's Maddie, coming in. Maddie comes from behind yet again. Yet wow. again, Maddie comes from behind to take wow. it. Wow. Maddie Hong. The son of Steve Hong, a legendary climber. Uh, Steve Hong actually developed many of the, the most difficult and most classic routes in Indian Creek. With his wife, Karen, with his, who's, who's, who's an amazing athlete, amazing cyclist. So he comes from a really genetically gifted family. He does. And it's, it just proves that life's not fair. Some people end up handsome and extremely strong, like Maddie Hong and Aryan DeCock. And some people end up like us, honey. <laughs> More handsome, but less strong. <laughs> but no, seriously, that, what, a, what, a, what an awesome race. Um, and, you know, Aryan was close, but man, I mean, Maddie, you know, he's, he's the only, uh, he's one of the few Americans to climb 515B. He's one of the top sport climbers in America. He's like the 12th person in the world to climb 15B. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. And I mean, I, I mean, honestly, I, I have no real comprehension of what that means other than that's really, really hard. And there's only one letter grader harder than that. And only one person's done it. So, you know, what an incredible athlete. And, uh, that was fun to watch. I mean, that's the great thing about this, right, is it's just so much fun to watch. Um, these people go head to head, and it, it, it just, there's a level of excitement and um, of, of just like, I don't know, it, it's just the most exciting competition that I've ever been a part of. So. Oh, yeah, I mean, by far. We're going to wrap it up for a few minutes, and we'll be back for the final round. Yep, and it's going to be Jimmy Webb versus Maddie Hong, and man, I don't know, it could, it's going to be close. And uh, I'm excited to see who pulls ahead. This could be a big upset. If Matty Hong can win it, he's taking down the dynasty. And the nest egg. Yeah, and he's, exactly. And he's taking all of our money.
So come on, Jimmy Webb. Thanks for tuning in. We've been getting tons of comments on the live feed. A demand for a knock-knock joke, and we will deliver for you. Knock-knock. Who's there? A broken pencil. A broken pencil who? Never mind. It's pointless. So there you go. There is your knock-knock joke. You are welcome. Um, actually, something we've been talking about is someone really important is missing from this uh, competition. Who is it? Chris Sharma isn't here. His wife is about ready to give birth. At least that's the story he's telling. Um, actually, Maddie Hong beat Chris Sharma in a, a, a previous round of Seagull Block, so maybe he's just afraid to face his competitor. We know that's the real reason. That must be it. We know you're afraid, Chris. Or maybe you're just about to be a father to your second child. Congratulations, and we're really sorry you couldn't be here. And here the, the final round goes. Awesome. This is it. Finals, dude. This is for this is for all the money. $6,000 goes to the winner. So this is a really big deal. This is the largest purse in competitive climbing in the United States. And Maddie and Jimmy are head-to-head -head right now. They're doing really but well. Jimmy, Jimmy has pulled ahead. But Maddie has come be from behind once already. Uh, I'm not going to write it off for Maddie. Maddie has the hunger. He's extremely competitive. He's extremely strong. What do you think, honey? I don't know. I think Jimmy has this. It looks like Jimmy's got it. And there's a reason that this guy is the four-time champion of Seco Block. Yep. Jimmy's going to take it. Jimmy takes it again, folks. He's unbeatable. Unbeatable. He is. Yeah. He's an animal. Stuck. Look at him. He, he's going to, like, rip Matty Hong's head off when he gets to the top. <laughs> no, he's going to give him a sweet hug because, you know, they're, they're, they're friends first, competitor second. That was an incredible, incredible round. That was really good. Exciting to watch. Well played, Matty Hong. Second place is not too shabby. This is some serious, serious, brutal competition. But, you know, it just goes to show that Jimmy Webb is in incredibly hard to beat. And this is really, this is his jam. This is his event. Yeah, this is his event, you know, and it's, and it, and it goes to show too that, you know, here we have two athletes from kind of different backgrounds. Maddie, one of the top sport climbers, and Jimmy Webb, one of the top boulders up in our country coming together to clash it out on this, this route that kind of splits the difference between sport climbing and bouldering. And, you know, I wouldn't necessarily think that someone who's a strong boulder would dominate this kind of competition. But it's a power endurance event in the end. It's not like a pure sport climb. It's, you know, if this thing were twice oh! as long. No way. Oh. <laughs> Maddie was teasing the, the crowd. Yeah, he's all like backflip. But here they go. You know, this is like one of the great things about this. You know, it's not even over when they top out the route. It's so exciting just to watch them jump. That was such an exciting competition. Walls are meant for climbing. It's great to see that message being put out there into the world. I really want to thank the North Face for supporting this incredible competition. This is one of the great events. And yeah, it's just, uh, I, I'd love to see this travel throughout the, the country and the world and, and, and have more people just enjoy this exciting, exciting form of climbing competition. It really bring, it brings climbing you know, to the world in a really special way, I feel. We're going to take a break and then come back for the trophy presentation. Yep, so we'll be back to, uh, to watch these guys get the trophies. And we just really want to thank everybody out there in the live audience for tuning in and for watching along with us and for supporting this incredible event. I hope you guys were entertained. And, you know, my wife killed it. I've heard she's an incredible commentator and an incredible woman, a badass climber we'll in her own back. right. We'll be back. And we'll be back. One more time. Give it up for your man, Carlo Traversi. Come on now. 1,250 bucks, not bad. Second place, the man that we discovered has a six gear in climbing, Matty Hong. Give it up. 2,250 bone jobs. And of course, now for the fourth year in a row, taking home $5,000 cash, your man from the South, Jimmy Webb. Give it up for Jimmy Webb. The man that makes us wonder why we don't just set up a direct deposit straight to his bank account year after year. That's four times first place, 5,000 bucks. Give it up for your male competitors. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the show. That's all we've got for you. You're going to have to sit tight, but we're going to see you at the same place, same time next year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>